the period. So if you select the period button, you can see, you can change the periods. There is, as we know, fixed periods and relative periods. So currently most of the dashboard items here are for last 12 months, but we can change it. Let's say last six months, confirm. And you can see that the data is for the last six months now. So all the data in the dashboard will change to last six months. I can remove it if I want. And also I can add an organization unit filter. So when I click that, currently it's defined by the user of unit, but if I want to change data to let's say animal district. So if I have access, if that user has access to that, organization unit data will be restricted to that unit here. Now it has changed to animal region. You can see animal region instead of the training line. So I'm going to remove that also again. So apart from more main, uh, main dimensions, the period and org unit, there are other additional disaggregations and org unit group which you can add. For example, if you want to add the disaggregation of sex, so if you want to see only females, so it will be applied. So the data will change to females only. So that is filtering the dashboards. And then next to that, there is a more button. So there is an option to start the dashboard, which can be done from the star icon or from here. So it will be started and it will be brought up, but we can remove that also. And there is a show description button. So this one is to show the description of the dashboard. So this below this, you can see the description of the dashboard. The dashboard covers areas likewise, what you have mentioned when you are creating this dashboard, that description will be shown. And next to that, there is a print button where you can print this dashboard. So when you click that, you see two options. One is you can print the dashboard layout or you can print one item per page. So if you click print dashboard layout, and then you will have to wait a little to, for the items to load. And the items will print in the same order as in the dashboard layout. So there are a few warning messages here. You have to use messages to use Chrome or Edge and wait till all the items are loaded and uh, use A4 landscape paper size and default margin settings. So the layout, the order will be dependent on what you, what is in the dashboard. It will be the exact same. So that is about the top items. So I will just quickly go through again the first part because the recording was not started at that time. So this is the DHIS2 dashboard. And uh, there is a plus button where you can create dashboards. Here you give a name, description, and you add the items which we will describe later. So next to that, there is a search button which I will come back later. So after that, there is a list of dashboards available to that user. So this is a list of dashboards, not dashboard items. So if you see, there are currently few dashboards aligned here. And there's a show more button where you can see additional dashboards which are accessible to that user. So there is a, there are a lot of dashboards. If you click this, show more button. So by default, you see a certain limited number of dashboards in the alphabetical order and but there is the priority is given to the start dashboards which will come first so if you remove this star it will go back to the original place and it will be just alphabetical order but if you want to start this it will, it will come forward right so after that we have described the edit 
function, the star button, edit function, where you edit the dashboard, and share button, which we will describe later, and the filter button. So that's a re quick recap because the recording has not started. So below that, you see the dashboard items. So each dashboard item is in separate boxes, the tables, charts, and maps. And if you click, if you see this first item, you can see that it's a chart with uh, about the, the HIV cascade, and there are three data items. And you can see what org unit and what period is that. And if you, there is a small drop down menu on the chart, and you can either see this visualization as a table or a map quickly from here. So if I change it to US table, you see the same data in a table. So I can go back and change it to a map. You can toggle it to into a map. Sometimes the charts won't work in the map mode because the org unit issue here. So I'm going back to view as a chart here. So if I click chart, so you can toggle between tables and maps and charts. And you can also open this chart in the data visualizer app, which we have discussed earlier. So if you click this, you can open the data visualizer and you, you will see the same chart and you can do additional manipulations here. And there is another button to show interpretations and details. So when you click that, below the chart, you can see the chart details and any interpretations which were done on this chart. You can see a promo that has mentioned one coming. So you can write your own interpretation here. So you can tag that person. You can write your own interpretation. Please explain further. And you can save that interpretation. So interpretation will also be added to that. So that it, to see interpretations, you have to click this, show interpretations and details. Let's move on to the next chart. So there you can see male and female aggregation, disaggregation on three data elements. So here I'm going to show you how you can further interact with the chart. So if you mouse over, if you hover over the data items, you can see a small description of that, the label and the value. And also using this legend below, you can filter data items. If you want to only the females to be shown, you can gray out the males. If you want it back, you can put it back and gray out the females. So these things I think was shown on the first day. I'm just going through again to remind. So you can interact within this dashboard. So if you go to this table below that, there is also some interaction you can sort Using the sort buttons, you can sort the data within the table. All the options, all the other options are available here, US chart, US map, and open the table in data visualizer. So we will go to a map next. So this map, ART retention rate 12 months by subunit or subunit. So there is a zoom button here, where you can zoom in and you can zoom out. And if you mouse over again, you can see the labels of the org unit, the boundaries, and the number, the percentage, retention rate, value. Also, you can see a legend here. If you mouse over to this place, how the colors are defined. And you can have the map in full screen mode. So if you click this, Map will go to full screen and you can see the map with the same controls here. So if you press escape, you go back to the normal screen. And again, in the maps, you can view as a chart. 
or you can view as a table and you can go back to map. So if it's defined by the org units, you can create the map easily from even tables and charts in the dashboard. So that is basically about the layout and the interactivity of the dashboard. So I'm going back to the presentation. Next, we will see how to create a dashboard within our dashboard layout. So to create a dashboard, as I mentioned, you can have multiple dashboards and a dashboard can have unlimited number of items within the dashboard. So that is one dashboard can have many charts, tables and maps and other items. So to create dashboards, I have shown you how to create where to start it. So there's this plus button. When you click that, you can add a new dashboard. So you get this screen when you click the plus button. So there are three boxes. First one is to, the, to add the dashboard title. Next one is to add the dashboard items. And the third one is to add the description to the dashboard. So in the second one, you can search for objects which are saved using when you created charts, maps, and tables using data visualizer in the Maps app. When you have saved it, you can add them directly by searching here. So that they will come at the bottom like this. And when they are appearing, you can drag and drop, you can rearrange, you can resize both vert vertically and horizontally, and you can also delete. So after adding the items into the dashboard and giving a name and giving a description, you can save it so that it will be available. You can again delete, there's a delete option and uh, So I will uh, show you how to create a dashboard now. So I'm going back to my demonstration. So we will create a test dashboard here. I'm going to click plus button. So I will add my dashboard as academy dashboard. demonstration. So next is to add items to the dashboard. So when you click this, you can see the visualizations which are available to be added. You can use search buttons. Let's say we will search for something on TV so that you get uh, dash, uh, visualizations on TV. So I will click uh, one of these and click insert. Now you can see that item has come to the dashboard. So that is on charts. So I will add another one. So first will come the charts, then there are maps. So if you click show more, you can see the further list. And I will add the map also, right? And if you go further down, there are additional things you can add. You can add a text box, you can add messages, or you can add spaces. So text boxes and spaces are also useful when we are creating in like uh, divisions within your dashboard. You can have a label using a text box and you can have some spaces likewise. So I will go to the dashboard now and see what items I have added. So there is this text box. I can give this 
text box a name here, text item, let's say PB. So I'm going to resize this. You can drag both horizontally and vertically. And you can take this up if you want. Put it on top, then uh, space also you can resize. I can put this TB map here. So I make it TB map. You can resize also with these things. And uh, you can put this one also on top here, aligning. You can resize that also. Then there will be a spacer. You want. So I'm going to save my channel dashboard now I have added a few items and I'm going to save it so my dashboard you can see now it's called academy dashboard and it has come to the front because of the alphabetical order so my uh, label is here the text box and uh, then you can see the map and the chart so likewise you can make your own dashboard and add the item. So if I can uh, go back to the edit mode. So when you want to edit the dashboard or delete it, you have to go to this edit mode, which I mentioned earlier. So there are two modes in dashboard. One is VV mode, where you can't change the layout and add the items. But if you want to do that, you have to go to edit mode and you can change the layout and add the items. Again, now I can add certain items here from here you can add also resources reports event reports and event charts we don't have it now because we our system is going to aggregate so likewise uh, let's say i'm going to add this epi also i'm going to put it down maybe further down below the spacer and save it. So I have the DB items, then there's a space and the API one. So that is creating a dashboard. And if you don't want that dashboard, you can delete it from here. So that is about how to create a dashboard. And uh, now, we will have our hands-on session. So we will have a 15 minute break. So you can go to that uh, academy site and download the learner's guide where you can see exercises. These exercises are not marked, but there is a marked, ex uh, no, marked assignment also. So I will show you that also. So if you go to the academic page and the dashboards, there is this uh, exercises download where you can download the hands-on exercises which are not graded. So you can do exercise one and two from here within uh, the next 15 minutes. And uh, we will come back in 15 minutes after your exercises so if there are any questions please post in the slack or in the chat we will restart the session in 15 minutes thank you very much